Was it a lot different to come right for days than say General Hospital? I mean, the big difference was like, I grew up watching those shows. So I didn't have to learn the history. Like I got my job at One Life to Live and I knew it like backwards and forwards. And then when it went off the air, they hired me to write General Hospital. They were like, do you need like time to get up to speed? And I was like, no, I was watching it when I was 10. So I know like, you know, I'm sure there's certain things I don't know, but I pretty much knew the history, the characters, the relationships, you know? And so there's a quickness that comes from that. Like um, here, I, you know, I clearly, I knew by osmosis from growing up on soap operas, I know about Patch and Kayla and Stefano and Marlena and all of those characters, but not, not all the relationships, not all the history, you know, and especially there's like that weirdness on days where like, you know, Julie and Hope are sisters and mother and daughter, like, and everybody is like practically a cousin on, on the show. So it was very hard for me at the beginning because I was like, oh, well, what if we put these two together? They're cute together. And, you know, the writers would be like, they're first cousins. You know, like, you know? <laughs> so I had to like, luckily the whole team, a lot of them had been there a long time. So they would bring me up to speed. And the other thing is like, if you've been watching soaps a long time, you do pick it up kind of fast. You're like, oh, I get it. This is like, Todd and Blair, or this is like whoever. Um, How did you get started watching soaps? Your parents? Did your mom watch? So my, no, not really. My, so my sister, so when I was a kid, our, the neighbor across the street who was like, would watch us after school, because my mother worked in a school and she got home at like 4.15. And we got off the bus at like quarter to three. So for like a couple hours, the neighbor's daughter would come over and watch us. And so she was like, say, 14. And my, or she was 16 and my sister was 14 or something. And I was like 10. So they controlled the TV. <laughs> and so as a kid, they watched General Hospital. Like, and then I sat in front of the thing from three to four and we watched General Hospital. And then, and then after that, I started watching all my children. And then I watched One Life to Live and I was watching like the whole thing. And then I went to, you know, I went to college, I went to law school. I was saying, you know, still pretty much keeping up with soaps. But then, you know, I was going to be a lawyer and I was working in a firm in Washington, D.C. I was really not happy. Watching soaps on your lunch break. Yeah. My boss, my immediate boss, sold his novel overnight for $2 million. Oh, my gosh. And they made a movie of it, uh, Absolute Power, it was called, with Gene Hackman and Clint Eastwood. It was oh, like, yeah. like 1996 or something. So this guy, David Baldacci, that I worked for, he wrote this book and now he's gone on to write, you know, 30 best selling books, mm. like a huge success. So as soon as he left to go become a writer full time, I, I'd had this little burst of excitement at my job, which was like, oh my God, David's selling a book. Now they're making it into a movie. You know, like it was fun to go to work and hear everything that was going on. The minute he left to go be full time writer and with the, that excitement was gone, I was going back to like writing articles of incorporation and I was like, I can't do this. So I quit and then I just got it into my head somehow, like I could write for a soap opera. Wow. And like One Life to Live was like my dream, but I would have really taken any job. And I moved to New York, slept on everybody's couch, wow. you know, and like randomly met someone in a bar after I'd been moving, in, living in New York for nine months. And like, now I was just starting to panic, like this is bad. <laughs> and I, what am I going to do? And my friend and I were out for somebody's birthday. And this guy says, oh, are you guys lawyers? Because he heard my friend and I talking. And he, I said, oh, she's a lawyer. I just quit being a lawyer. I'm trying to be a writer. And he's like, oh, he's like, what kind of writing? And I said, I want to write for a soap opera. And he's like, oh, my friend works at a soap opera, One Life to Live. <laughs> I'm like, oh, what does he do? And he's like, he's the writer's assistant and i'm like oh wow and then he's like as a matter of fact he's quitting his job next week and i'm like oh really and he goes yeah and i think he's supposed to find someone to take the job and i'm like really and he goes would you is that something like you would be interested in and i'm like trying to be calm i'm like yeah okay and i like you know give the guy my number and then i go back to my little temp job on the next day thinking nothing's going to come of this and somebody calls me and says, I understand you're interested in my job. And I like, 
he said, can you send me a resume? I mean, my resume is like law school, you know, I have nothing on it really. And then this producer calls me who was Robin Goodman. And she's like, I'm at this little temp job. She's like, hi, this is Robin Goodman from One Life to Live. I understand you're interested in the writer's assistant job. And I'm like, yes. And she's like, I need to hire someone quickly. Like how soon could you come here for an interview? And I'm like, I'm getting in a taxi. <laughs> so I go across town to 66th Street. I'm like walk in the building where they have all the photos from over the years of like, I'm like dying. <laughs> I, I go up the stairs, there's Robin. She's like, you know, very no nonsense. She's like, hi, Robin Goodman, One Life to Live. She goes, why One Life to Live? And I'm like, well, you know, I love the strong women characters, like the relationship between like Dorian and Vicky and, you know, I'm going on and on. And she's like, well, I'd like to take you down the hall and meet the head writers. So it was at the time, Jean Passanante and Leah Lehman. And they were like, look, we kind of have somebody for this job, but we're going to interview you anyway, blah, blah, blah. So even though it was kind of going well, I still thought like, I'm not getting this job, right? So talk to them, blah, blah, blah. They asked me for re uh, reference. I go back to my little temp job. I was working in a lawyer's office, like, and five o'clock the phone rings and it was Robin Goodman. And she's like, you got the job. And I was like, oh my God. She's like, can you start like, you know, next week? Wow. So I, I became the writer's assistant. And then I basically had every single job. I was, a, you know, I was a, they would let me write a script like once every couple months if somebody went on vacation eventually. And so I learned so that I became a full on script writer. Then I became, a, you know, an outline writer. So you have a little more say in helping to tell the story. Mm -hmm. And then I just moved up, I was eventually like the co-head writer, then eventually the head writer, and that was the head writer the last four years before it went off That's the amazing. air. And then, and then from there, Brian Franz hired me and Frank to go to General Hospital. Mm. And so it was like a long run until then I lost my job at General Hospital. And so, you know, I was kind of regrouping. I wrote a pilot for ABC that didn't go, but that was kind of fun to do. It was actually about a soap opera. It was about the behind the scenes. Like it would be like, you guys would be characters. Like mm -hmm. it was like, what was going on behind the scenes at the soap opera. And the main character was a, a girl who quits law school to go become a writer's assistant. And, but she gets the job because the writer's assistant drops dead. And then when she gets to the place, she finds out he was murdered. So there's like a whole behind the scenes soap going on. Wow. But it didn't get, it didn't fly. And so sitting there trying to figure out my next move. And then my agent calls one day and he's like, I'm not saying anything. I never said this, but maybe start watching Days of Our Lives. <laughs> so, so, I, so I did. And then they had me write a story first to see, you know, if I would be a good fit. And I wrote the story with Bonnie and Hattie teaming up. I wrote Will Horton coming back from the dead. Um, and we wrote, um, something that I'm forgetting, like another big story, <laughs> but, um, about their interest and they, right. I wrote like three sort of overall stories and I can't believe I can't think of what the third one was, but anyway, um, they went with me <laughs> and, uh, so this is like coming up on four years. Yeah. Yeah. It's been fun. So I really, and so this is the first time, other than when I was out of work, like to have that kind of break, like I haven't worked for 13 weeks. Like right. I just never get that because we're like going, going, going. Um, How do you think it is now? Because I mean, it must have been weird for you even coming into a show that was so far ahead. I mean, yeah, because I've, I've never been on a show that was that far ahead before. No, and for all of us, it was weird too. I mean, and then people would say, what's happening? Like, I have no idea what's happening because it's so long ago. But now when we come back, how far, I mean, how far- I guess it'll be, I mean, it will still be because it's still written through, I think we've written through like New Year's already. So, you know, we're still in the writing a few months ahead, but like it will, that that gap will close, but I'm like bad at calculating yeah. those things. I would think it'd be more like a couple months. Yeah, yeah, I think so. I think it will be. Um, I mean, weirdly, it worked in our favor for now okay. that, we've, that we've been on the air. Yeah. You know, who could predict that? Show. We, yeah, we were the only show that was it. That yeah. Had, right? And assuming like we go, let's say we do go back. I know it's a rough date, but if we go back September 1st, 
then the show will be uninterrupted because we have shows taped through the beginning of October or whatever. Right. So right. we won't have any reruns, I don't think. You know, unless something happens and we can't go back into production, but you know, hopefully all the, these other shows that are already back are like paving the way and, and we'll learn from what they're doing. But the other shows- Wait to see the blow up dolls. Right, well, well, like, yeah, Bold and the Beautiful is back, I think. I thought Young they were back, but then they ended it. No, they, they went back again. They, they, and then they, re, they stopped and restarted, I think. Oh. Because they had a problem with the testing and stuff. Like, that's what I don't know, like, I know nothing about. I know you guys are going to have to be tested all the time and that kind of thing, but I don't know the specifics. I know there's some quick turnarounds on tests, but I was yeah. just uh, like a week ago because somebody in my husband's office was positive. Mm -hmm. And um, but we were both negative, but geez, they stick that swab so far up your nose. Have you been tested? It's awful. No, I haven't oh. had it, but everybody well, I know has had it. Really, so. nothing's supposed to be that far up your nose. But right. um, but I think yeah, there, I know another guy who he actually he's a uh, uh, like a stage hand in the porn industry, mm -hmm. and they are already back, and they have to be <laughs> tested every day. Right, so like, <laughs> like, that's like, like that's like amazing to me because obviously we're sitting there going. They can they kiss? Can they can they hug? Can they do this? I'm like, I don't think they can simulate that in their job. Yeah. But you know, they kind of bend the rules in that, that I, uh, yeah. genre anyway, a little bit. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's gonna be like a new I think, and I'm don't quote me because I don't know any of this stuff for a fact, but I think as long as you are in the process of testing, you do you don't have to have the results like back before that person can work, you know, like as long as like say Mary Beth you were tested you can work that day even if they're not getting the results like until the next day I think but I'm not temperatures, take temperatures or yeah they have to just the, the process has to be in motion they don't have to have every result back I don't think they could work that way but I'm not you know crazy time we have it's, to not my, it's above my pay grade yeah, what did you say, Steven? Egg held everything up because the actors are the most vulnerable people I mean everybody else like you said can wear a mask and social distance as much as possible, but right. actors have to be unmasked and close together. So. No, I think it's going to be a challenge and like, look, I know you guys are all, you know, friends and, and you know, but still that's like a tricky, mm -hmm. that's like a tricky situation. I mean, I know they've already, they've got so much, oh, we're going to keep people here. They've got a whole, you know, procedure already in mind, how they're going to keep people distant. I know you like, they've got plans for how they're going to do hair and makeup differently. Mm -hmm and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, maybe you know, they've told me to avoid certain things, you know, you know, don't, if you don't need a prop, they don't want people constantly touching things and you know, that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, it's you know adventure. what, like all this, we have to be flexible and just kind of roll with it and see how it goes. Yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I assume everybody wants to come back. I mean, I know like some of like, you know, I just, you know, things I didn't think about, like, older people in our cast, are they comfortable coming back to the studio? Like that kind of stuff, you know? Right. Um, <clears throat> On a side note, did you hear uh, Judy, um, Judy Evans' whole escapades during this time? I mean, I was, I mean, Deidre had sent me a message when it first happened. She said, Judy fell off her horse. She tells me like the whole thing, right. but she said, she's gonna, I think she's gonna be fine. She's gonna be out of the hospital like in, in a, two days. And then it was like getting worse and worse and worse, you know? And I mean, what's amazing is she sent this sort of group message, maybe Deidre forwarded it to me, I can't remember. And it was like, you know, you can't keep a cowgirl down. Like she's so positive. It's well, I talked to her right when she was at first in the hospital and she was good. But then I think things took a turn. And right, things got worse for her. Blood but she's, oh, she's doing okay now, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. What a wild ride, like things weren't hard enough. Jeez. I know. I mean, she was like, she's been so lovely to write for and like, it was so much fun to write. Like even like my first story when I pitched, it was Hattie and Bonnie, you know, and you get the note from someone like, well, do we need two? Do we need, can it be one or the other? And I'm like, no, that's what makes this fun. <laughs> it's two doppelgangers are better than one. Yeah. <laughs> Um, I go, I can't call this story double trouble if there are not two people. <laughs> That's funny. Sure. Um, no, no, no. It was great. No, it's it was okay, Ron. Fun, we appreciate fun you coming on. All right. No, yeah. it's so nice of you guys both to ask me. And Mandy, thank you. Um, 
so no, I'm very excited. I mean, it's a good time to be doing this with all. It's a big Steve Kayla week on. Monday, I know. So, yeah. Thanks for writing that. It was really, I, and that reunion. We went, Mandy. Since Mandy doesn't know, I don't want to say what <laughs> reunion, but good stuff. Really. Now nice. maybe I'm gonna throw my one pitch in. Maybe you can get our Joey out of prison. Poor Joey. Um, yeah. Or at least a great visit. too. James is such a good actor. Yeah. Yes. I'm yeah. not. My lips are sealed. Yeah. Yeah. I love him. I. I've always been so sad to have him in prison and that we never go visit him. But I, I know it's so like those things, it's so hard to keep like a reality about that. Like yeah. once in a while we'll throw in that line, like, oh, I just came from that. It's so sad, you know, like so you don't want to think about I just it. Spoke to him on the phone. He's fine. But... Right, right. Yeah. The thing that cracks me up is I mean, okay, he murdered someone, but like several people walking around have murdered lots of people. <laughs> they went to prison for like a week and a half and they're back. No, no mean justice that is, you, you think like, no, justice is not fair in Salem. Like of all people <laughs> still be in prison, like, you know, it's ridiculous. Oh, well, that's my only pitch. Anyway, great to see you. All right, no, thank you guys so much. Thank you so much. Thank you everybody. All right, bye. Take care.